Hello everyone, this is our first lecture on computed tomography. After today's lecture, students will know the historical development of CT, the system components used, and system geometry. Students will understand the imaging parameters like KV, MA, slice thickness, and detector configuration. Students will understand the basis of image formation using linear attenuation coefficients to create a grayscale map of Hounsfield units. Students will also know various modes of image acquisition. CT or CAT means computed tomography or computed axial tomography. Tomography is from the Greek word tomos meaning slice and graphia meaning to describe. So tomography means to describe a slice. During the years following the discovery of X-rays, diagnostic imaging involved a two-dimensional display of superimposed images of objects. There was a lot of anatomic noise as objects in higher layers obscured lower-lying objects. In 1972, Godfrey Hounsfield developed a technique to produce non-superimposed images of an object in a 2D slice. The EMI Mark I shown in this image was one of the first CT scanners built. It was a single detector, single slice scanner with a ball big enough to scan a head. CT technology has advanced from single slice scanners that were built in 1972 to multi detector CT scanners. There are currently CT scanners with 320 detector channels and scanners capable of reconstructing 512 slices from 256 detector channels. In addition to the growth in the number of detector channels and the number of slices, Dual source, dual detector, and dual energy CT scanners are now common. There has also been advances made in reconstruction algorithms like statistical iterative reconstructions and model-based iterative reconstructions. Machine learning algorithms like deep learning are also now available in CT imaging. CT scanners that can display a spectrum of energy from 40 keV to 140 keV are also now available. Over the years, the use of CT has grown exponentially due to excellent image quality and rapid acquisition times. This increase in utilization can be attributed to the use of helical scanning and the development of multi-detector arrays. This has led to reductions in scan times and opened CT to more applications. With increase in utilization, there is also an increase in patient dose. CT now accounts for a larger slice of dose to the U.S. population. Let's look at the X-ray system components. The main system components are listed here. The X-ray tube is usually a high power tube of 60 kilowatts or higher. Next, we have X-ray detectors, a gantry, and a patient table. We shall learn about each of these components in the next few slides. The basic geometry of the CT scanner is shown on this slide. The isocenter is the center of rotation of the scanner. Images are reconstructed at the ISO center on a 512 by 512 matrix. Because of the fan beam geometry used for imaging, the maximum field of view is defined by the maximum extent of the detectors as shown on this image. As in radiographic imaging, there is a magnification factor from ISO center to the detector location given by M equals B divided by A. This is accounted for in the reconstruction so that the image is not magnified when reconstructed at the ISO center location. The rotation of the gantry around the circular field of view is shown in figure B. In modern CT scanners, the X-ray tube and detector are rigidly attached to the same support and rotate together. This is called the third generation rotate-rotate geometry. We shall learn about the CT scanner generations in a later slide. X-ray tubes rotate at very high speeds. In modern scanners, it is possible to get 0.25 seconds per rotation, so we have four rotations every second. This is useful for imaging moving parts like the hat. The design of the gantry and x-ray tube is shown in figure A. This design reduces wobbling that will add significant torque to the scanner. Figure B shows the x-ray beam profile with the anode cathode axis running parallel with the z-axis of the scanner. X-ray angular coverage is shown here with a fan angle and cone angle. Most scanners have a 60 degree fan angle. The cone angle is much smaller. The heel effect is absent along the fan angle, but is present on the cone angle. There are 1,000 to 3,000 projections acquired per rotation. CT tubes typically operate in the 80 to 140 kV range, 
but in recent years, some manufacturers have introduced 60 kV to 150 kV options. 60 kV can be used to reduce dose to smaller patients, and 150 kV can be used for increased penetrability of larger patients. The CT beam is heavily filtered with added filtration in the 5 to 10 mm aluminum range, so the beam is very hard compared to radiographic beams. Newer CT tubes have high heat capacities greater than 8 million heat units and up to 30 million heat units in some cases. They also have fast anode cooling rates of more than 1 million heat units per minute. In some tubes, the X-ray beam is steered so that it hits different portions of the anode. This feature is used to reconstruct more scan planes by increasing the sampling area. While CT tubes may operate in the 80 to 140 kV range, useful effective energies lie in the 40 to 60 keV range. The upper curve shows the advantage of the tube potential selections. The mass attenuation coefficients of Compton and photoelectric interactions are well separated in this region for soft tissues. The lower curve shows the mass attenuation coefficients of various tissues, showing the separation between iodine, bone, and soft tissues at the effective energy range. There are slight variations on the choice of tube potential. Some vendors offer 90 to 130 kV tube potential, so the effective energy will be slightly different. The differences in mass and linear attenuation coefficients of tissues is what makes CT imaging possible and is unique for the CT modality. Most CT scans are of the head and torso area. The torso area is divided into chest, abdomen, and pelvis. These anatomies are oval or circular in shape, so they attenuate the X-ray beam to different extents. To account for this uneven attenuation, manufacturers use beam shaping filters to equalize the beam over the face of the detector. The beam shaping filter is called a bow tie filter. The actions of the beam shaping filters are shown in these figures. The top figure shows the beam profile without the beam shaping filter. The bottom figure shows the effect of the filter on flattening the beam. The right image shows three scenarios. B shows no bow tie filter, C shows an ideal bow tie, and D shows a small bow tie filter. Notice the dose distributions in the circular geometry. In older generation CT scanners, gas-filled detectors were used. Now CT detectors use scintillation crystals for converting X-rays to visible light. Some detectors are made of bismuth germanate, cadmium tungstate, or cesium iodide, while some use gadolinium oxysulfide. Gadolinium oxysulfide has high density and high light output. The lower figure shows each scintillation detector module and the associated electronics. The electronics portion has gain channels for the detector and contains an analog to digital converter. There is an anti-scatter grade between each module. The grade could be linear or in some cases 2D. A linear grade is shown between detector modules in the top image. Modern CT scanners have a donut-shaped gantry that is equipped with laser lights and button controls to lower and raise a patient table and also to move the table in and out of the scanner for positioning. The controls for moving the table are also available to the operator in the control room. Patient tables can support up to 400 pounds, but tables with higher weight limits are also available as an option. The scan field of view is a circular region in the XY plane and is between 50 to 70 centimeters in diameter. The z-axis is parallel to the cranial caudal direction of the patient as shown in the bottom left figure. There are also accessories like power injectors for contrast. In first generation CT scanners, a narrow pencil-shaped X-ray beam was scanned across a patient in synchrony with a radiation detector on the opposite side of the patient. The pencil beam and detector form a projection of data. After collecting projections at one angle across the patient, the X-ray beam and detector were rotated to a new angle and the scan repeated to collect projection data at a new angle. This was done over a 360-degree rotation to collect all the projection data. This method of scanning was called Translate Rotate and is shown in the top left figure. In second generation scanners, the pencil beam was replaced by a fan beam and a wider detector array, but the same Translate Rotate approach was still used. In third generation scanners, a curved detector is rotated around a patient in synchrony with an X-ray tube in what is called a Rotate Rotate geometry. Most modern CT scanners use the Rotate Rotate geometry. 
A fourth generation system is one where there is a circular ring of detectors in a fixed position and an X-ray tube rotates inside the detector ring. An important advance that allows the rotate-rotate geometry is the slip ring technology. A slip ring allows the rotating gantry to be connected to the stationary gantry without wires. Slip rings are important for helical or spiral scanning and have led to reduction in scan times. Fan beam projections are a common projection mode compared to parallel beam projections. Each ray forms a projection of data at the location of each detector element. With rotate-rotate geometry, scans can be acquired quickly and cover the entire anatomy depending on the weight of the detector array. In early CT scanners where single detector channels were used, the displayed slice thickness of the scan was determined by the X-ray beam width through adjustments of the collimator. Detectors were 13 to 16 mm wide and by collimating, 1 to 10 mm slices could be achieved. For single array detectors, scan times were long, making most scans requiring breadth holding practical. In multi-detector CT scanners, the slice thickness is determined by the detector configuration. A detector configuration is represented by the number of detector elements and the thickness of each element. Beam collimation is equal to the element thickness multiplied by the number of detector elements. An example is shown for 64 detector elements with each element having a thickness of 0.625 mm. By multiplying 64 by 0.625, a beam collimation of 40 mm is obtained. Once you have more than 64 detector elements, the beam profile becomes more like a cone and is called comb beam CT. With multi-detector CT scanners, a larger anatomy could be scanned in a short time. From the previous slide, we can estimate scan times for a 20 cm section of patient anatomy for an axial scan. We can do this for the single detector channel and also for the multi-detector channel. For a single detector channel, if we wanted to scan a 20 cm section, we can collimate to 2 mm so that we can obtain 2 mm thin slices for display. In this instance, we will need 100 single scans to cover 20 cm. If each scan took 1 second, a 20 cm section will take 100 seconds to scan plus time for moving the table. This is not practical for breath holding. With a multi-detector CT scanner with a detector configuration of say 32 by 0.625 mm, the beam collimation will equal 0 0.625 times 32, which is 20 mm. With a 20 mm beam collimation, we can scan a 20 cm section in 10 seconds plus time for table movement. This demonstrates the advantage of a multi-detector CT scanner compared to a single detector array. This image shows a 16-slice detector configuration. In multi-detector scanners, multiple detector elements are combined to form a detector array. With these arrays, different slices can be reconstructed depending on the slice thickness selection made and how many detector elements are used for each slice. The top figure shows how four images can be displayed with different slice thicknesses ranging from 1.25 mm to 5 mm. The 5 mm slice is obtained by adding four 1.25 mm detector elements together. Because of the heel effect and the finite focal spot size of the X-ray beam, the beam slopes off at the center and falls off at the penumbra edges. In order to collect X-rays in the most uniform portion of the beam, the penumbra edges are placed outside the active detector in what is called overbeaming. Overbeaming reduces the geometric efficiency of the X-ray collection process because it's wasted radiation. Geometric efficiency is the ratio of detected beam to entire beam. Wider beams are more efficient than narrower beams because the overbeam in a wider beam is smaller relative to the beam width. The plot shows the geometric efficiency of various detector beam widths. To reduce patient dose, manufacturers have introduced ways of removing X-ray components that are not useful for image formation. One way is to use filters to filter out the pre- and post-tails of the X-ray beam. Let's now learn about the parameters for image acquisition. We shall look at each of these parameters on the next few slides. In CT imaging, KV ranges from 80 to 140. Some manufacturers may use 90 to 135 KV. 
In new scanners, the KV choices may go as low as 60 and as high as 150 KV in increments of 10 KV. Use lower KVs for PEDS and for smaller patients. For large or obese patients, a high KV of 140 can be used for penetrability. Note that when iodinated contrast is used, a low KV of 100 improves contrast. Because of tube power limitations, higher KV means lower available tube currents and vice versa. For example, if you have a 40 kilowatt tube and you select 120 KV for scanning, the maximum MA available can be obtained by dividing 40 kilowatts by 120 KV to get 0.333 amperes or 333 milliamperes. The minimum rotation angle needed to form an image in CT is 180 degrees plus fan angle, so about 240 degrees if you use a 60 degree fan angle. If a scanner rotates through 360 degrees in one second, it means the rotation time is one second. For helical scans, scan times depend on the rotation time, the beam width, the extent of the scan, and the pitch factor. Pitch is table movement per rotation divided by beam width. So if you have a 40 mm beam width and a 200 mm section is to be scanned, if pitch is 1.25 and each rotation is one second, then table speed can be obtained by multiplying beam width by pitch to get a table speed of 50 mm per second. So when scanning a 200 mm section with a table speed of 50 mm per second, scan time is obtained by dividing 200 mm by 50 mm per second to get 4 seconds. Using a pitch can speed up or slow down a scan depending on if the pitch is greater than 1 or less than 1. Selection of image thickness or slice thickness depends on the clinical task at hand and the noise level you can tolerate. Thinner slices will be noisier than thicker slices for the same dose. Recall that relative noise in an image is inversely related to the square root of the signal source. Signal sources can be dose, MAS, or slice thickness. The detector configuration chosen will determine the thinner slice available for reconstruction. On this image, Choosing a 16 by 1.25 mm detector configuration means slice thicknesses available are from 1.25 mm to 10 mm as shown. Beam width is also determined by detector configuration chosen. Beam width options can range from 5 mm to 160 mm. Wider beam widths mean larger sections of anatomy can be scanned in each rotation, so the scan time is reduced. Let's now look at some modes of acquisition. The beginning of most CT acquisitions is a scanned radiograph. It is a radiograph of the patient anatomy acquired with a fixed tube and detector orientation. There is no rotation and the patient is translated through the scan bore. It is called by different names by different manufacturers as listed here. Once the radiograph is obtained, the technologies can plan the scan by defining the extent of the scan, the KV, MA for manual scans, field of view, pitch, whether an axial or helical mode will be acquired and other parameters. This image is a scan radiograph with the scan intervals marked. After the patient is scanned, the image is reconstructed. We shall combine our image acquisition modes from the previous slide with image formation. We shall start by introducing axial acquisitions, filtered back projection, attenuation coefficients and hands field units. In CT, images can be acquired axially or helically. Axial acquisition is a step and shoot mode. Acquired images are reconstructed using the Feldman, Davis and Kress or FDK filtered back projection algorithm. Reconstructed images can be displayed with slice thicknesses between 0.625 mm to 10 mm. Slices are displayed in a contiguous manner with no gap between slices. Images are displayed with grayscale values called Hounsfield units. Hounsfield units are calculated from the formula shown. For each voxel, the linear attenuation coefficients of tissue in that voxel is used in the formula with water as the reference linear attenuation coefficient. The Hounsfield unit of water is on the average zero. Helical imaging is a continuous acquisition mode. The beam is continuously on as it rotates around the patient and the table is moved at constant speed to advance the patient through the beam. 
Images are reconstructed and displayed at different slice thicknesses using the FDK filtered back projection algorithm. For pitch less than one, slices used for reconstruction will overlap, leading to less noise in displayed slices. For pitch greater than one, there will be gaps between slices leading to a noisier image per slice displayed. The use of helical scanning can increase or decrease the dose depending on if the pitch is less than 1 or greater than 1. The bottom image shows three images with different pitch and dose values for a fixed MA scan. Pitch also affects scan speed. Pitch less than 1 results in slower scans and pitch greater than 1 results in faster scans. Axial and helical acquisitions reconstructed with filtered back projection results in noisy images. Iterative reconstruction methods can produce lower noise images for the same dose. Iterative reconstruction or IR can be done using a statistical approach or a model-based approach. Model-based IR approaches can produce images with less noise than statistical IR images. Examples of statistical and model-based methods from different manufacturers are listed. A combination model and statistical IR approach is also available and reduces the reconstruction time of a purely model-based approach. Different strengths of IR are available and often involves blending a percentage of filtered back projection with the IR algorithm. By using IR methods, images can be acquired at low dose and reconstructed to produce high-quality low-noise images. Or for a given dose, Thinner slides, noisy images can be reconstructed to obtain a better quality image. This image shows the difference between a 60 mass image reconstructed with filtered back projection compared to a statistical IR reconstruction. The latest approach to image reconstruction is the deep learning method. Deep learning based methods use a training data set as inputs to the deep learning algorithm and a model data set of what image is expected. The deep learning algorithm learns the correct image quality by iterating the training data of the model or ground truth until the desired image is achieved. These images are reconstructed with a filtered back projection algorithm, a model-based IR system, and three levels of a deep learning algorithm. The best image quality from this deep learning method is not necessarily the one with the lowest noise, but one that has low noise and preserves spatial resolution information. So far, we have learned about axial and helical acquisitions, assuming that our CT detectors were 64 channels or less. Newer CT scanners often feature detectors with more than 64 channels. As more detector channels are added, the effect of the cone angle becomes significant, requiring specialized cone beam reconstruction algorithms. CT acquisitions with such detectors are called cone beam CT. Cone beam acquisitions allow for imaging large moving structures like the heart with a single axial rotation. While this is an advantage, there are drawbacks like increased scatter and the potential for cone beam related artifacts. An example of scanners using cone beam acquisitions are listed here. The desire to image fast moving structures like the heart led to the development of dual source and dual detector CT scanners. In dual source CT imaging, the gantry has two X-ray tubes and two detectors. In some machines, one tube is primary and the other is secondary, so the secondary is usually a smaller generator and its detector is also smaller as the image shows. Both tubes and detectors are at 90 degrees to each other, so the rotation time is cut in half compared to a single tube and detector system. Dual saw systems have programs for imaging the heart or for pediatric patients because of the fast rotation times. An advantage of having dual tubes and dual detectors is the ability to acquire images at two different energies. Dual energy CT imaging enables energy subtraction for visualization of low and high energy data. For those manufacturers that have a dual tube and dual detector system, the approach is to use a high KV for one tube and a low KV for the second tube. There are other ways to achieve dual energy CT. Some manufacturers use a single tube and a detector. The tube KV is switched quickly between a low and high KV value to obtain different energies. A third approach is to use a single tube and a multi-layered detector where the low energy X-rays are absorbed in one layer and the high energy X-rays in a second deeper layer. All these methods depend on the fact that Hounsville units are different at different energies because the Hounsville unit depends on the linear attenuation coefficients 
that are energy and atomic number dependent. With this difference in linear attenuation coefficients, different tissues can be separated at different energies and virtual energy spectrums created. This is a spectral imaging application. We shall talk more about spectral imaging in a different lecture. Let's finish up with a few review questions. First question, a patient is scanned in CT using a helical scan mode. The technologist wants to select a pitch value that will reduce dose to the patient. Which is the correct pitch to use? Your choices are first choice 0.569, second choice 0.983, third choice 1.375. The correct choice is 1.375. Second question. What is the beam collimation for a detector configuration having 224 detector channels and 0.625 millimeter thick elements? The correct choice is obtained by multiplying 224 by 0.625 millimeters to get a beam collimation of 140 millimeters. This is the last slide. Thank you for watching this presentation.